Welcome back to Inside Africa in Tigre, Northern Ethiopia. It's amazing how close together so many historical religious sites are here. It almost has a feel of Jerusalem here in Africa. About 10 kilometers from the ancient church of Ukro is the tiny village of Negash, which means king in the Tigrinya language. This is the home of Ethiopia's first Muslim community. And this is the holiest place here for Muslims. They believe this is where the original followers of Muhammad are buried. Here, I meet Sheikh Adam Muhammad, who tells me in the seventh century AD, the prophet Muhammad sent some of his followers to the kingdom now known as Ethiopia. Muhammad received the spirit in Mecca, but the first people who accepted Islam were in Ethiopia. Muhammad sent 11 men and five women followers to Ethiopia because it had a fair king. Even after the non-believers asked the king to return the migrants to the Arab country, the king refused. It's also believed that a relative of Muhammad lived here. Yes, Muhammad's daughter was here, but she returned back to her country. This place is the burial site for the five women and the ten men who first migrated to Ethiopia. Sheikh Muhammad shows me the inside of the mosque. This is a sacred site many Ethiopian Muslims consider second to Mecca. The translator tells me it's being renovated in cooperation with the government so it can be considered for a UNESCO World Heritage Site, an effort that would help secure its significance to the outside world as well. About a two-hour drive on winding mountain roads takes us to another significant site in the Tigray region. On the way, we stop to recognize a relatively recent historical event. These are the Adwa Mountains. Here, there are no stones or monuments, nothing to tell the story of what happened here. But it was in these mountains, in the mid-1890s, that Ethiopia defeated the invading Italian army, becoming a hero to the colonized nations across Africa. The Adwa Mountains surround the small, ancient town of Yeha, home to a temple that is what some say is the oldest standing building in sub-Saharan Africa. Hi, I'm Sonny. I'm Kudus. Kudus, nice, nice to, meet, to you. meet you. Welcome to this site. Thank you so much. Show me the temple. Yeah, OK, let me show you. This dates back to the Damat civilization. So this is for the god of al -Maka. Yeah, this is for the god of moon, which is termed as al -Maka. al -Maka. To mean the boss god. There were many gods to be followed by them. But the dominant one was Moon God. That is why they call it al Makkah. Oh, I see. Why does it still stand? It's incredible that all these years it's been preserved this way. The stone is limestone, which is so compact and so soft. So this is one reason it enabled to have such kind of years of existence. Inside the temple, Kudus takes me to the place where the altar once stood. Uh, among the many sections, this was the most important section where we can see openings from there to here. It was partitioned. And this is supposed to be the holy part. Next to the altar is where animals were sacrificed to Al Moka. So this is where the blood was offered. And in the Christianity period, this became baptizing site. So Kudus tells me that Abune Afse one of the nine saints from Syria who helped spread Christianity in Ethiopia came here during the 6th century AD. When he found this old abandoned temple, he began using it as a church, continuing the tradition of spirituality in this holy place. Not far from the temple, 
Kudus takes me to the special building where the artifacts found in the temple and the nearby church are kept. These are the treasures. Yeah, this is the treasure house where we can have archaeological findings and ritual objects. The owner of the civilization in Iha were writing on a stone using the Sabian language. Do you know what they say? I will try it, but you know that this dead language, Sabian language, almost to be dead. Mm -hmm. But I can try my best. Okay, try. What and is... the system of reading is from right to left, and from left to right, it keep going zigzag, or it does have a name called Bostrophiden. It is Greek name to mean exploring system of reading. So generally, dedicated for the son of the crown, the king. These stone carvings are not the only priceless artifacts held here. Starting from 6th century AD, since then there are different manuscripts written by hand in Giza language. And the material is got skin. And here are wooden crosses, an iron cross from 6th century AD. These were donated by King Abramaskal, who was the king of Aksum in 6th century AD. He offered it to the church. A humble display for such a rich collection of history. So we've now come a short distance from the temple. Kudus, what is this? This is the great uh, palace of the Damat Empire. The Damat Empire was the dynasty of Yaha, which is dated back before 8th century BC. And this is supposed to be the political and economical center of the Damat Empire. The Damat Empire ruled this area from the 10th to the 5th century BC. It is believed to be the first structured empire of sub-Saharan Africa. So how many kings would have enjoyed this palace, for example? It is said uh, that there were 56 kings uh, had been administrating under the system of the Damat dynasty. Among of them, a uh, one to be mentioned is Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a king who was supposed to be the last king of Iha, the one who named Ethiopia to be named after him. The name Ethiopia has got in the time of Iha. It's no wonder Kudus considers Yeha to be the birthplace of Ethiopian civilization. After the Damat civilization declined, Yeha was abandoned as the seat of power in Ethiopia and the nearby kingdom of Aksum began to rise. That's where we're headed next on Inside Africa.